Um, yeah, hello, welcome uh, here and out there. Thanks for joining us. Um, uh, great pleasure this evening to uh, welcome David Abel and Grace Mitchell together. Uh, this will be tremendous. Um, I just want to say that Stacey Blint has decided not to read uh, this evening as a show of support for the global general strike. Um, but really excited to be in company with you all. Um, I'd like to begin with a land acknowledgement and say that we at Woodland Pattern acknowledge that here in Milwaukee we live and work on traditional Potawatomi, Ho-Chunk, and Menominee homelands along the southwest shores of Michigami, part of North America's largest system of freshwater lakes where the Milwaukee, Menominee, and Kinnikinick rivers meet and the people of Wisconsin, Sovereign, Anishinaabe, Ho-Chunk, Menominee, Oneida, and Mohican nations remain present. We further acknowledge the grave evil colonialism introduced to these lands through genocide as well as slavery, but also via racist and xenophobic beliefs, laws, and practices that continue to inflict harm upon black, brown, and indigenous lives. We honor those who have lived and do live now at these intersections of identity and experience and are committed to the active dismantling of white supremacy. Um, once again, really thrilled for this. Grateful to you all for joining us. Um, a few, I just have like just a little bit of business and then we can get on with the readings, which of course we're all, I know, very excited about. Um, but I do wanna say a few things. One is that we're presenting this reading on a give what you can basis, um, which is typical for us. Um, but in this case, with all the, this evening's proceedings being donated to, uh, in, in support of Palestinian relief efforts. So if you're in a position to give, um, I hope that you will this evening. Um, we'd also like to um, hold space for David and Grace to speak to the context of this evening's reading if they'd like to and in whatever way seems most appropriate to each of them. Um, we do have books for sale uh, at the front, so I'd invite you um, to visit us there after the reading. Um, and a couple of other things. Um, on to some stuff that's happening in the future. Um, this Sunday, um, October 22nd, if um, anyone here or watching um, knew uh, Janine Arsenault, who recently passed away, will be holding a memorial gathering um, from 5 to 8 p.m., um, a potluck, a space for people to share memories, um, read poems, and otherwise um, join us in, in saying goodbye to her. Uh, so I hope you can join us if that's something you would um, like to do in a few new Janine. Sorry. Um, on Thursday, uh, the 26th of October at 7 p.m., we're really excited to welcome uh, Quan Berry. This will be in celebration of her recently published eighth collection of poetry, Auction, um, which is phenomenal. And that'll be a wonderful reading. Um, and that is co-sponsored with, uh, by our friends at Boswell Book Company. So thanks to Boswell for supporting that. And I'm sure folks from Boswell will be here on Thursday. Um, and then as always, of course, uh, I invite you to join our monthly open mic, Resound Return, uh, last Friday of each month. So this month, that is Friday, October 27th at 7 p.m. Um, so for more about these and other upcoming events through the end of the year, um, um, you can uh, visit us at woodlandpattern.org. Okay, that's more than enough from me. And now I'm excited to turn things over to Grace Mitchell, uh, an artist and educator living in Milwaukee. She's an instructor at UW-Milwaukee and the Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design with Michael Lagerman, Mitchell co-runs underscore, an artist-run uh, artist project space, screening room, and queer operation emphasizing risk-taking in art film, installation, and performance, and I'm super thrilled not only to hear Grace read, but also to see some 16 millimeter projection, which is wonderful. So Grace, welcome and thank you. Thank you, Mike, for that. Super sweet. Uh, yeah, and thank you all. It feels a lot, it means a lot and feels a lot to be sharing this space with you all. And I wanna say that I support Stacy and her decision, and I also am really grateful for Woodland Pattern to be donating all proceeds um, to relief and relief funds. Um, so yeah, thank you, and thank you for the conversation revolving around that. So I'm going to be reading some excerpts from uh, 
a, a ongoing series of poems called Memory Bank, which also Paul is here, and it's in Paul's um, publication, Trilobite, online. So if you want to read all of them, they're there. Paul's hiding, but he's, I swear, he's back there. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this was a series of poems that uh, sort of like conjured memory in this way that gave permission to non-narrative, non-linearity, which is true to memory's form, and allowed me to kind of get into a more trance-like state, because um, words don't always come easy, um, and talking about times of my life where I was actually like quite wordless, so it's been... Um, an endeavor that I'm still working on with this series of poetry. And then I'll wrap it up with some other poems and then project a film, which to me is a poem. So it felt fitting to, to end the program with that, or my, my section with that, before passing over to David. Um, okay, so here's some excerpts from Memory Bank. Time doesn't match the pacing. Pit stains flower into fragrance. Leaflets deck the halls. The umbilical cord pulls tight against the violin bow like a chokehold. Carpet stays dirty and the hairs go gray. Mina watches her baby suckle and wonders if fairies slowly burn across the sky. Steam unspools from the spout and the sunset curtsies away. Nothing romantic, just the swell of soap as it blows into bubbles. Digital lightning bolts pixelate as Mina's mind drifts to the power of witchcraft. A dull butter knife dashes between her fingers. Your pinky is as thick as a carrot. She drives to the grocery store with wet hair and clamps the girdled roll across her stomach, reminding her of a mammogram. Dinosaurs lament their plastic form. Nothing sounds good. The sign above the aisle doesn't list all of the items. My name belongs to someone else and all these words are borrowed. Drown the basement. The cave is an ocean. I got lost looking for the opening. Teeth come in as they go. Spit on your nails to make them shiny. Aphrodite gives birth to a bull in a maze. Are you afraid of the dark? Father on all fours. Dust the Siamese cat for good fortune. Declawed paws are tongueless. Ornaments bob in the bathtub. Barbie's hair grows back. Just leave that one there. The Patriot Act is put into place. I hold my ear to the wall. Teresa's dull crotch is covered in red, posh stripped naked. I chase myself out of the house. Memory is not our own. I remember pretending to, to write before I knew how to, convincing scribbles, a story in crayon. Cardboard bricks topple. What if I pee standing up? Bush reads a book, the pet goat. He eats everything in his path until it turns into desert. Soggy cereal pluck elastics off brackets and run braceless, white squares of enamel surrounded by yellow. My foot is in my mouth. Toe rings clatter, shake the sandy sheets. Flatulence fans itself. Algae lines the ass crack. I lick my lifeline. The crease deepens with closed hands. Shopping carts crash. Mina photographs her shape, contorting the sides and thighs. She replies, she receives a reply. The burp carries sadness. Infomercials splay dildos. Vibrating tubes sit atop cotton clouds. The jackrabbit gnashes. Teeth grind. The silica quakes. Our chimney is struck and falls into the field. Corn never comes again. The windows look in. He trims his nails. The cold air on exposed skin reminds him of purple newborns. Birth was a bold move. Ten and two. He buys a sheet of stamps with exact change. Lady Liberty speaks French. Furthermore, she's a Roman goddess. We borrow and thus we owe. Discovery is made while flossing. Legs spread for the full length mirror. Does my pinkness match my mother's? Inherited labia, grandmother folds. Burgers spill out of the greasy bottomed bag. Smoke plumes, the car stinks. Mina doesn't taste the fries, wipes her hands on black pants. Wedding bands clink in the basin, porcelain stains green. Earth appears as a dot between the G and E rings of Saturn. The ceiling hits the floor. 
Strings are man-made to begin with. A hand-stitched dress sits with old moth moth balls, its fumes filling my mouth. The box doesn't expand, only thickens. Light-headed fluorescence, take the next exit. Airbags await causation. Does the dish fall or is it thrown? Her soapy hand counts to three. Sweeping blondness, next crane. Mina privately pirouettes in new shoes and walks around the state fair alone, sitting on various park benches, watching teenagers share a foot-long corn dog. Where does it all go? Sky ride selfies, skirt the margins with a pencil, standardization blurs all of the bubbles into one big spot. Cataract, correct. The center of the tissue is used, but never the edges. Each balloon contains some spit. She inflates my cheeks by blowing. It's hard to hug until it's over, and over time her, bo- her body becomes different from mine. Warm breath unknown to nostrils. Chat rooms feel us. How old are you? We tap on the two-way mirror. It was then that my body left me. The pissed on floral pattern blooms, tan couch cushions and carpet darken with urine. I sit in the flooding gutter, jeans heavy, riding low. We wear underwear in the rain comparing blind spots. We are separated by lines. Wood becomes slippery, snaps, bone cracks. We don't always know why we're laughing. Watching Ronald Reagan's funeral with a broken arm, Nancy is preoccupied by stone steps and high heels. It's as if she's been here before. The next day, my friend signs my fiberglass cast with metallic markers. The shopping bag is double knotted at the elbow. Shower water still seeps in. Licking the gobstopper, its colors mix with blood. Can't taste a thing but crave change. The blue comes back to yellow with green in between. Rawness is realer. Reduce the house to skeletal structures. Basement remains undone, skin on skin, pressing into bone spur. I stare at the staircase, nails sticking out where carpet ought to be. Costumes deflate without the people inside. When do you let go? The balloon pops, tangled in the pines, pearly white ribbon out of reach. Ice cream makes the car seat sticky. Eyes squint at seagulls flapping through hot air. How's the water so blue on you? Thighs chafe, stretch marks contour the ass cheek. Mina points, her finger stuck in the door. Claustrophobic mouth space. Permanent bone-like pieces gather, words come out clunky. Thumbnail digs at the roots while we sit in a circle, the world beneath us in different colored threads. Lost count of the molars. Mina browses the greeting cards and tugs at a helium balloon. Happy birthday. A rotisserie chicken sits in the cart. Crescents unfold in the oven. At some point, the cards become routine, leaving the words up to Hallmark and signing your name. I fall in love. Mina says it's witchcraft the way I light candles. Wax dripping into carpet, a hardened maroon. Harvest moon. I'm not casting spells, but staring straight into flames. Love is blind, maimed. The whites of his pimples, I would pop them. Smiley face, smiley face. Fill in the silence with I don't know what. Wear his jeans, but they are too tight. Dust bunny, belly lint. I'm never full. Never enough fingers, only fists. Chew on split ends, on drawstrings. Suck on your thumb. Bite my arm, forearm hickey. Crooked teeth marks look like staples, keeping it all together. And this is my last one from that series. Puddles, pools. It's the time of year when dirt turns to mud, knee high in it out in the cornfield, trying to get stuck. Shoes and socks get lost in the stocks. Faded blue jeans coated in crackling mud. Encrusted skin, granules cling to the tiny hairs on my arms in midriff. Shave the happy trail to throw dire- to shave the happy trail to lose direction. Throw off the scent. There is only up and down, and I haven't found the bottom. 
The sun dips behind trees and appendages go numb. Clothes are wet and heavy, dragging as they harden. Solidifying into a sculpture, cracking out of marble, losing my marbles, psyche revived by Cupid's kiss, eros in a corn maze, shucking. By sundown, I am stuck in one place, return to a form. So that's from Memory Bank. I'm just going to take a sip. I always plow through poems, so I'm like, oh shit, okay, it's like, <laughs> this might be a little faster, but it's okay. Um, so this one's called Four. One, I don't like to contain things, but then find myself lost. Asphalt on a stick, for example. Two, hummingbirds like the red dye, but it's bad for them. Three, you can't drive your car at night there, because cows lay down on the warm tar and you'll hit them. Four, she slipped on her puppy and had to get two foot surgeries. Now she can't wear flip flops. And then this one's called colors. Orange, yellow, purple, green, red. These are flowers from far away. Blue makes me squint, but isn't bright. Coffee stain on a special shirt. Windmills, but they aren't called windmills. One yellow truck. Yellow square on a roof. Cow, no cow. I'm a mess of a man with lessons to learn. Cluster bombs become landmines if they don't go off. Saying truth so many times it loses meaning. Becoming lines on top of lines on top of lies. Relationship cycling. Look how, look how long that train is. Flammable, corrosive, flammable sunblock. One spot always burns. Yellow bug guts on the windshields, like rain, but solid streaks casting some shadows. Lives are often spared by villains. Why am I torturing myself? The microwave says 118 in green. The clock says 1028 in red. This is the last one that I have planned. He describes the clouds in a painting, how they mimic the shape of the tree in the foreground and the road goes into a vanishing point. Here we are vanishing. Well, thank you, and then, yeah. Just one more. Can I get one? Okay, this is a little uh, touchy, so bear with me. <coughs>
Yes, thank you so much. Uh, that's fantastic. Really appreciate it. Um, really quickly, not too quickly, but um, I realized one thing I forgot to say, very important, which is thank you to Jordan Dunn for organizing this reading. Um, he was unable to be here in person, but hopefully you're tuning in out there, Jordan. Um, or if not, you know, wherever you are, thank you for, for this and for, for everything that you do. Um, uh, okay, now, great, great pleasure to welcome um, David Abel, who is a writer and editor and the proprietor of Passages Bookshop in Portland, Oregon, a founding member of the Spare Room Reading Series, now in its 22nd year. His recent publications include a chapbook of poems, Equifinality, Crane's Bill, two books based on verbal performance scores, 14 Eclipses from Couch Press, and Selected Durations from Black Rock Press, and the visual narrative Carrier, the first volume of an ongoing hybrid genre serial work, Sweep, is forthcoming from Chax Press in Tucson. Um, and just generally, generally very thrilled for this reading and uh, welcome and thank you so much, David. Thank you, Michael. Um, thank you, everyone at Woodland Pattern, just for being here. Um, it's been many years since I've been here, and I'm very excited to be here. I'm honored to be reading here for the first time. It's a legendary uh, space in my mind. Um, I was married to a book artist and printmaker who was part of a cohort of students at UW-Madison in the 70s, primarily 60s through the 80s, who were very often involved here uh, with exhibitions, publishing broadsides for readings. And so I had an, an image in my mind for many years and then was able to be here for the first time about 30 years ago. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful and honored to be here, and I also want to say that I support Stacy and her decision, and I am in sympathy very much with uh, the aims of the general strike. Um, any proceeds from sales of my books, there are a couple of my books, um, would also go to the same relief organization, and I'll leave those copies here as well, so people who aren't here tonight but can come later and get those books, um, that will still be true with the uh, indulgence of, of Woodland Pattern. Um, I'm going to present a range of, of pieces tonight. And um, it's really uh, great to be here with Grace. And uh, thank you for that reading and that film. Does the film have a title? Hydra. Hydra. Oh, wow. Um, film is very important to me. I was involved in experimental film in Portland and presenting. Uh, and music are the probably the biggest inspirations for my work. So um, the, um, the first piece that I'm going to present is called Shoots and Ladders. Some of you will remember that board game. And um, it's dedicated to two friends, uh, Mark Owens and Jackson McLow. And I want to be sure that uh, everyone can see and read. Is that the case? Okay, good, good. Word. 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 Ward. Ward. Cord, cord, court, court, cart, cart, art, 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 art. Art. 
and and plant 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 plan plan plain 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 stain stain stake stake stoke stoke woke 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 wake wake lake lake lair lair liar liar The next piece is from a series of pieces that I call eclipses. And I think of the eclipse as a genre, a generic form like a sonnet. Um, and it's something that I stumbled into. Um, a lot of my work explores reading uh, because I've been obsessed with that since I could do it. and. Um, different kinds of reading, different ways of reading. So all of the eclipses are ways of reading excerpts from texts. Initially, they were all just single sentences. And this uh, is, this, the source text is Elaine Scarry's The Body in Pain. I should also add that these the form of these was very directly inspired by a piece of music called Coming Together by Frederick Shevsky from 1969, the text of which is taken from a letter by Sam Melville, who was one of the leaders of the Attica uprising, who was murdered um, when the prison was retaken. Though there may be no human event, there may be no human event that may be no human event that is be no human event that is as no human event that is as without human event that is as without defense event that is as without defense as that is as without defense as torture is as without defense as torture others as without defense as torture others give without defense as torture others give rise defense as torture others give rise to as torture, others give rise to the torture, others give rise to the same, others give rise to the same central, give rise to the same central question, rise to the same central question by, to the same central question by what, the same central question by what perceptual, same central question by what perceptual process, central question by what perceptual process does question by what perceptual process does it? By what perceptual process does it come? What perceptual process does it come about? Perceptual process, does it come about that process? Does it come about that one? Does it come about that one human? It come about that one human being, come about that one human being can about that one human being can stand, that one human being can stand beside one human being can stand beside another 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 human being in stand beside another human being in 
agonizing beside another human being in agonizing pain, another human being in agonizing pain, and human being in agonizing pain, and not being in agonizing pain, and not know in agonizing pain, and not know it, agonizing pain, and not know it, not pain, and not know it, not know, and not know it, not know it, not know it, not know it to know it, not know it to the it, not know it to the point, not know it to the point where, know it to the point where he, it to the point where he himself to the point where he himself inflicts the point where he himself inflicts it, point where he himself inflicts it and where he himself inflicts it and once he himself inflicts it and once again himself inflicts it and once again lead inflicts it and once again lead to it and once again lead to an and once again lead to an answer once again lead to an answer centering again lead to an answer centering on lead to an answer centering on interactions to an answer centering on interactions between an answer centering on interactions between the answer centering on interactions between the body centering on interactions between the body and on interactions between the body and voice interactions between the body and voice made between the body and voice made possible, the body and voice made possible by body and voice made possible by a, and voice made possible by a language, voice made possible by a language of, made possible by a language of agency. I'm going to read a little from uh, an early book uh, called Black Valentine, published by Chax Press, um, in part because Grace Mitchell mentioned it, and, uh, and then I realized that it would be uh, a really perfect thing to read. Um, it's uh, In Memoriam, Robert Duncan, 1919-1988, and Benjamin Abel, 1918-1989. When I arrived, you were already here, waiting for me. Now you are gone, and I remain. What was it about that day that it took you with it? Black Valentine. Black is the beauty of the brightest day. Christopher Marlowe. You are riding in a yellow cab. The philosopher is still in bed. Her to beast behind the wheel, and it's begun to rain. There's a sign in the window of the philosopher's car. No radio, nothing of value. Arriving on earth, you are whisked to a party in progress. You feel baited by returning. The words speak. We do not constitute this meaning, you remember. The words, shining, speak. We had another life. You mistake us now for it. Sea foam at sunrise, salt mist, forget us. Every steps on someone buried, and every habitation maps an infinite graveyard of instants where the article or person, entire world, strata of disappearance. The unspeakable is incorporated here by reference. This book, Float, is also published by Chax Press. Publisher, Charles Alexander. Publishers, Charles Alexander and Cynthia Miller. Uh, Charles, again, uh, UW Madison student of the 70s, uh, 
fine printer and publisher, a wonderful poet. Uh, Float is, uh, the, the book is dedicated to the composer and writer Franz Kamen, um, also a Wisconsinite who I think at the age of 16 performed piano concertos with the Milwaukee Symphony. Um, Franz Kamen, 1941-2010. And the epigraph is from his text, Statements on Doing Nothing. When there is nothing left, it is the time for giving gifts. And I'll read a, a few excerpts from the first piece. This is a collection of three pieces that have very different uh, strategies of collage. And uh, the first piece is called Conduction and was published originally in an exhibition catalog for the artist Anna Hepler, another University of Wisconsin student much later, um, who um, had an exhibition in Korea in Seoul. And this text Conduction was published in that catalog. The meaning of a meaning, its tendency, is more than the sum, sequence, or description of its instances. Walls, fences, we can only decorate, florid in speech or hysterical. The dictionary is purple because it is incomplete. Where purple stands for beautiful, lovely, mute. The most exhaustive work is exceeded the moment eyes lay on it. Yet it remains, they remain, I remain, we remain. false echo. The city of sadness extended in all directions, as though they were pockets. Migration out of season is a product of the point of view of an eye no longer practiced in the true illusions. Electric, our temperaments are modulated before we know whether the strings are in tune or even still there. But you have preserved your method against its own success, distress, that it keeps you unconsoled company out of habit intuited between spasms and how that too must change inside gratitude, for example. The second part of the book is called Orbis Pictus and again um, uses found texts. The second, uh, the th no, the third part of Orbis Pictus is called Lebanon and the texts, uh, I'll read the short credit about the texts. They are, it's an homage and a travesty which draws extensively from the poetic vocabulary of Michel Trad, a study in Lebanese colloquial poetry from 1968. Michel Trad, who lived from 1912 to 1998, uh, was a poet whose poems were widely memorized and served as lyrics for songs by Fairuz and others. And he worked for more than 30 years as an administrator in the Roman ruins of Baalbek in the Beka Valley. Lebanon. Introduction. Open any book. Your good nature will bring you unbounded happiness. It would probably not be possible for human beings to perform this. Accept the next proposition that you hear to go back to the mountaintop. Oh, cold wind, my hands forget everything. On the soft and dirty roofs of the city, I forgot. I searched for what was lost in the lonely rooms of handsome strangers, in the dreams of embarrassed immigrants, in the architect's sky with its well-designed clouds. I am haunted by numbers that repeat, pursued by mechanical darkness. Someone will come to tell this story. 
a vine cluster, a lock of light. Hold on to the locks of its hair. She curls the locks of my hair with her fingers. When it comes to grow green, the leaves were very green, a green dream. We have planted the greens by the water of your spring, the green shade, a green note, the green nights, your green eyes. The fire erases and eats away its greenness, the most costly vegetables. Open any book, close the first and open another. You become the story. The book is only something lost, a boy who died a child, the night crowded with vacancy. Implacable stories. No number disappears, the lights go out, but the number three repeated three times, the number one repeated four times, the number 12 repeated twice, I turn the lights on and off by thinking about the numbers. Someone is sending me a message. Care draws its lines with an iron nail. Of what use to me are eyes that do not see you? This is from the middle of the sequence. Never again shall we listen to the green curtains, the orange peel old and blotchy. In my land is the porphyry. I search this world for you. The land of the lightning, the world searches itself for you. A veil of locusts, the world goes round and round. A pool of wine, it is all pools of tar. At the end of that garden, he spits red blood on the rugs. Wrapped in black headdresses, the white butterflies fly in a temple that has collapsed on itself. Like crystal in the moonlight, the carcass of a mule, full of acorns stained by red wine, parsley, and lettuce, early red roses making the stones of the houses weep. No bee remains in the hive. A crow is swallowing the corpse. Coming from the land of Persia, no sweet girl, no songs, and no wine. To build castles in order to warm you, a thrush is building a nest in the woodwork of a coffin. On the day that we were created, the swords turned pale. The scents of our clothing's exhalations of pistachios and hazelnuts. Your brown body, a worn and faded rug, dazzling with its diamonds. It may be that it occurs to the world to moan. A rose seller sold this paradise at a loss. Falsehood had laid its eggs between you and me. There's a, a, a book called Carrier that was uh, most recently, it's had many incarnations and most recently was published by Red Fox Press in Ireland. It's a book of visual poems, of visual narrative, glyphs I think of them as. And uh, strangely enough, um, this projected version which we'll see um, was devised for a conference of medievalists because the poet and translator and medievalist Chris Puma put together a panel on unreadability uh, for that conference. It was really uh, terrific to be able to <laughs> read poetry to medievalists. Um, and um, so this text is specific to, except for the end of the text, is specific to that projected version.
all explanation is elegy. If we could imagine texts as constituting a set of systems with a complex unfolding akin to that of an environment, or rather an ensemble of environments, that is, a landscape, ultimately a world, we might ask whether the degradation or disappearance of an individual text of localities, species, and histories of texts could have the sort of salutary effect that fires before or outside the consequence of human effects on climate and terrain have for forests. If we were to apply the processes of elision and selection, of veiling and revealing that have been practiced by poets, for instance, in what has come to be recognized as a contemporary genre and typically labeled with the inapt term erasure, to the corpus of literature as a whole, would we have a powerful and beautiful understanding, a healthy forest of works and readings? Or would we merely be emulating the compositional effect of a life lived through endlessly mutating limitations? He carried me home. Carried me in from the car. Asleep or pretending to be. She carried me as she'd carried my sister. He carried me he let me carry him When you carry me, when I carry you, then we're carried away.
I have two, two more pieces. The next piece is another of the eclipses. And the 14 of the eclipses were published as a, a book in Portland by Chris Ashby at Couch Press. And I really hadn't thought that they were poems to be read on the page. I thought of them as scores, as performance scores. But Chris said, no, I think this would make an interesting book. And he was really right, and I was really very grateful. Uh, but it was a very small edition, which was depleted quickly. And if all goes well, I hope, uh, there'll be an expanded bilingual edition that will be co-published in Portland and Mexico City someday. Um, but uh, the first 14 have already been translated. And this, this one is, uh, the text is taken from the really essential Audre Lorde essay, Poetry is Not a Luxury. For there are no new ideas. There are only, there are no new ideas. There are only new, are no new ideas. There are only new ways, no new ideas. There are only new ways of new ideas. There are only new ways of making ideas. There are only new ways of making them. There are only new ways of making them felt. Are only new ways of making them felt, of only new ways of making them felt, of examining new ways of making them felt, of examining what ways of making them felt of examining what those of making them felt, of examining what those ideas making them felt, of examining what those ideas feel them felt, of examining what those ideas feel like felt, of examining what those ideas feel like being, of examining what those ideas feel like being lived, examining what those ideas feel like being lived on what those ideas feel like being lived on Sunday. Those ideas feel like being lived on Sunday morning. Ideas feel like being lived on Sunday morning at, feel like being lived on Sunday morning at seven, like being lived on Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Being lived on Sunday morning at 7 a.m. after, lived on Sunday morning at 7 a.m. after brunch, on Sunday morning at 7 a.m. after brunch during Sunday morning at 7 a.m. after brunch during wild morning at 7 a.m. after brunch during wild love at 7 a.m. after brunch during wild love making 7 a.m. after brunch during wild love making war a.m. after brunch during wild love making war giving after brunch during wild love making war giving birth brunch during wild love making war, giving birth, morning, during wild love, making war, giving birth, morning hour, wild love, making war, giving birth, morning hour dead, love, making war, giving birth, morning hour dead, while making war, giving birth, morning hour dead, while we war, giving birth, morning hour dead, while we suffer, giving birth, mourning our dead, while we suffer the birth, mourning our dead, while we suffer the old, mourning our dead, while we suffer the old longings, our dead, while we suffer the old longings, battle, dead, while we suffer the old longings, battle the, while we suffer the old longings, battle the old, we suffer the old longings, battle the old warnings, suffer the old longings, batter the old warnings, Battle the old warnings and the old longings. Battle the old warnings and fears. Old longings. Battle the old warnings and fears of longings. Battle the old warnings and fears of. Battle the old warnings and fears of being the old warnings and fears of being silent. Old warnings and fears of being silent and warnings and fears of being silent and impotent and fears of being silent and impotent and fears of being silent and impotent and alone, of being silent and impotent and alone while being silent and impotent and alone while we silent and impotent and alone while we taste and impotent and alone while we taste new 
impotent and alone while we taste new possibilities, and alone while we taste new possibilities, and alone while we taste new possibilities and strengths. This last piece is a collaboration with Kathy Keene, a um, longtime Wisconsinite, Madisonite, and uh, a friend of ours, Joseph Krupczynski, bookbinder, architect. His mother died suddenly in 2000. And Kathy said to me, we have to do something for Joseph. Could you send me a text so we can make something for Joseph? And so I had a text that I sent her that I secretly, it was a text that I hadn't been able to figure out what to do with how it, what it was. And I secretly thought she'll, she'll figure it out. This will be, this will be great <laughs> because she's so good at that. And, um, I was expecting, she's a letterpress printer, and I was expecting a proof of a broadside. And instead, what I got back was a, a piece of fabric with this text sewn. And instantly, I understood why I hadn't been able to figure out what this text was, because it was one long line. I made a paper mock-up of the whole thing and realized that like printed music where the end of the, the line is not, it's conventional. You have to find the phrasing from within the music itself, and this was similar. So she then sewed this text. She's been sewing text now for about 25 years. And she said at one point, she said she started sewing text because after 20 years of setting type, she wanted something slower. And uh, she spent months uh, sewing it. She used to sit in the train station in Portland and sew. And she said people, travelers, would come and sit close to her. They wouldn't talk to her, but they, it seemed that they were just soothed by her activity as she sat and sewed. Um, it's called threnos, a Greek word meaning song of lament, mourning, which survives in English in the word threnody. Uh, not a common word, but, but an English word. Uh, Threnos in memoriam Rose Krupczynski, 1941-2000. Rose, the rose of the rose, richness of the rose, manifold richness of the rose, and manifold, full, the full, revealing the full shots, revealing the full beautiful shots, revealing the full selected has selected, photographer has selected where, photographer has selected every lovers, every rose lovers, every of rose lovers, every plots of rose lovers, every gardens, rose gardens, gardens, rose gardens, botanical gardens, rose gardens in, are they, are roses, they are wild roses, they are like wild roses they are, and like are they are which they are, from which they are strains, from which they are ladder, the ladder growth, the ladder opulent growth, the ladder and opulent growth. Intense flowers, intense petaled flowers, intense many petaled flowers, intense 1900 to 1900, previous to 1900, bred previous to 1900, old, bred previous to 1900 from modern distinguishes, modern horticulture distinguishes modern, today's horticulture number without number, strains without number, create strains without number, crossing roses, crossing of roses, crossing breeding of roses, crossing the breeding of, have lovers, have rose lovers, have 
since rose lovers have, ever since rose lovers have blooms, coveted blooms, the coveted blooms of the coveted blooms, supply of the coveted built and built purposes and built medicinal purposes and built for medicinal purposes domesticate Romans, domesticate the Romans, domesticate, attest the Romans, domesticate the as the rose, as the the rose, as the praised the rose, as the who praised the rose, such sources, such as sources, such ago as sources, such years ago as sources, such full, a full rose is a full cultivated rose is a full Greeks cultivated roses, a full ancient ages, the ages down the ages, artists down the ages and artists down the ages have, they have, and they have immemorial, and they have time immemorial, and they love of love, symbol of love, symbol of love them, a symbol of love made them a symbol. Thanks very much. Uh, David, thank you so much. Um, thank you once again, Grace, just tremendous all around. Um, and to all of you for being here, all of you out there, uh, have a wonderful evening. If you're here with us in person, stick around, check out the books, enjoy the good company, and good night. <laughs>